Good day, good day. I'm Attorney Reeves and this is your Q&A Social Security Disability Today. As always, I welcome your questions, so let's go ahead and get started. All right, our first question, the individual is drawing VA disability benefits. They're also drawing Social Security disability benefits. They're also paying an additional family allowance for their children but they also are responsible for paying child support which is being taken out of the Social Security as well. The question to me is, is this legal and should they get an attorney? First and foremost, let me make one point abundantly clear. Yes, it's legal. Let me explain to you how. Social Security under the regulations, if you pay into the system, you may be eligible to receive Social Security disability benefits. If you get earnings enough to where you're qualified for Social Security disability benefits, Social Security also will provide an additional dollar amount for any children you have. This is called family allowance. This is coming to you if you have any children under the age of 18. And typically that money goes wherever the children go. I've had this happen every now and then where I have people say, wait a minute, isn't that taking care of my child support obligation? No, that's not taking care of your child support obligation. That family allowance is what the Social Security Administration provides to you because you have children. It's not a special program that ensures that it pays your child support. Also, keep in mind this. Under the Social Security Administration's regulations, they have what's called an anti-garnishment anti statute, which means that no creditor can garnish your Social Security except for a few entities. A federal loan would be like a student federal student loan or um, you owe an IRS tax lien federal agency like Social Security where you owe them money, alimony, and guess what? Child support. So if you owe back money in child support and you're sitting here saying, I don't understand, Social Security is paying out this extra dollar amount per month, shouldn't that cover my child support obligations? No, it won't because the reality is you owe that money before you started getting disability benefits. So since you are no longer able to work, Social Security wants to ensure that the child is receiving compensation for the fact that there is money that you owe for child support from your benefits. So I always tell people, because every now and then I get a few people get fired up because they're thinking that that extra amount of money they get per month should be covering for their arrearages. And I'm like, no, it doesn't work like that. You owed that money before you got disability. So it's, you don't get the luxury of saying, oh, I want to use that money to pay my back child support. No, partner. You owe child support, female or male, they're going to take a portion of your disability benefits to address the money going backwards. The family allowance money is going to address it going forward. Keep that in the back of your mind. If you find yourself in a situation wondering why Social Security is paying you additional monies for family allowance, allowance yet still garnishing money out of your check for child support. My second question is, how can I prove that I'm disabled by getting medical evidence when I don't have medical insurance to get medical evidence. I've written about this on my blog, legalbeat.anthonyreeves.com a few times, but let me go ahead and break it down to you like this. When you're applying for Social Security Disability, you bear the burden of proving you're disabled, not the other way around. A lot of times what happens is people always say, well, I'm entitled to receive my money and I'm entitled to get it. No, you're entitled to apply. You must demonstrate two things. One, that you're eligible. And that's not automatic. That's the first. Then secondly, you have to prove that if you're eligible, that you should be entitled to receive disability benefits. Now, here's where it gets weird when I say this. Eligibility, there's a technical and there's a medical portion. The technical is, if it's for Social Security disability, have you paid enough into the system? If it's SSI, do you have enough resources to demonstrate that your financial situation is so dire that from a resource standpoint, you should be permitted to apply for supplemental security income. Move that out the way. The second part of your eligibility is the medical. Can you medically demonstrate that you are disabled? And I tell people a million times over, Social Security is not in the business of proving that you are disabled. You have that responsibility. Now, 
let me call it like it is. We right now we don't we we have universal health care. We don't not really whatever. The reality is, is that most people who are not working can't afford to have insurance. So what do I tell them to do? You get it where you can. Get treatment where you can. One of the things the judge is going to ask you when they're looking over your case is have you availed yourself for any health insurance from the from the county, health department, low share of cost, or free clinics. If any of those things are available in your area and you don't use them, when you have then you don't have a good reason for not using them, you're gonna make your case look really bad. So when people come to me and they're like, what do I do? First, go to the health department. Let me make this point abundantly clear. The health department in most counties will provide you or at least direct you into the research or at least direct you towards those resources that may be able to assist you. That's the first thing. If they have countywide health insurance, see if you can get on it. Don't grumble, complain, and whine about how long it takes you to go through the process. Go through the process. Apply for it. Keep documentation of your application for it. If they deny you, ask them to provide you a copy in writing. So if you go before a judge and they ask you, have you applied for health insurance for your county, you can show them where you have been denied as proof that you've actually tried. If there's a place that has a low share of cost, what is a share of cost? Share of cost basically means, and I'm not hyper technical on this, but let me see if I can explain. Share of cost is a situation where basically you have to pay a certain cost for your medical expenses up to a particular point, and then at that point, that entity typically takes care of the rest. What does that mean? Well, if your share of cost is like $100, well, that means is that once you paid up to $100, after that, any medical expenses that you have incurred as a result, they should cover. Medical expense meaning doctor visits, meaning um, medication, procedures, things of that nature. If you have free clinics, go to them. How do you know? How can you find out? Contact your health department. Contact social services. Contact your various churches and ask them if they're aware of any clinics in the area. Go to them. I know I'm telling you a lot and it's tough because when you're at home and you're in a lot of pain and you're in a lot of discomfort, these things may seem tough in, in terms of going to them, but when I'm telling you, at some point, you will be sitting before a judge who's going to ask you, I know that there's a free health clinic in your area. I know that they have share of costs. I know the health department is good. Have you used any of those things? And that, what happened was, is probably not going to fly in terms of with the court. Plain and simple. Avail yourself of those. Try also keep in mind this because a lot of times people start screaming and holler, oh I ain't got no money to do anything. Be mindful of what happens when you use that statement. Because I can't tell you how many times I've sat in hearings and people said I don't have money to do things but they got money to buy liquor. They got money to go get cigarettes. You know they got money to do other little things. Well they went on a trip to hang out with their homeboys. You better be prepared because if the court looks at you and asks you these questions the magical thing may come up how you got money to do everything else but you ain't got money to take care of your health keep that in the back of your mind remember I know this is gonna sound hard and you you're for some of you may have representatives some of you may be doing this on your own I tell people all the time I know it sucks but you bear the responsibility of proving you're disabled but not only are you responsible for proving you're disabled you're responsible for availing yourself of trying to use whatever resources that are available in your area. Keep in mind, because I got news for you. The judges are aware of what is in your area that you can have access to. And if you have a good reason to demonstrate why you didn't take advantage of those resources, there's a good chance that the judge may feel that your condition is not as severe as you say it is. So keep that thought in the back of your mind. All right, everyone, again, thank you for joining me for another edition of Q&A Social Security Disability Today. As always, keep those questions coming because you know I enjoy them. You know how to reach me. I am Attorney Anthony Reeves, your Social Security Disability Attorney, and thank you for joining me again for another edition of Q&A Social Security Disability Today.